Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist, and with me as always is my sidekick, the Boogeyman. Today is the second of two parts of what to do in the winter. We addressed first how you should dress yourself during the wintertime, and in this episode we're going to talk about what you can do for your bike in the wintertime. Don't forget, riding in the winter when it's cold and when it's wet automatically makes you a badass. Don't forget that. But that doesn't mean you should always have to brave the elements without the proper attire and without having the proper attire for your bike as well. We're going to address a few things that you can do to your bike that will make riding more comfortable for you and overall better for your bike for the longevity of its life. The first and probably the most important aspect of this is lights. We're going to talk about the headlights and the taillights. First, make sure you have a very good and very bright front light for your bike. One that's designed for your bike, for a bike in general, and one that has a good mounting system for your bike that allows you to adjust the aim of the left and right and up and down of the light. Of course you want people to see you while you're riding, and of course you want to be able to see while you're riding. So having a light with a high lumen output is always very good. In the case of the light you see in front of you, we're using an 850 lumen bike light. Now this is actually currently set on low, and it's got four total settings, low, medium, high, and insane. The low setting puts out about 200 lumens, and for most situations, that's plenty, especially if you're in an urban area or a well-lit suburban area. However, if you go into a rural area or a place where there is no light, sometimes being into the high or ludicrous setting is actually a good thing. On my commute home from work, I do about 13 to 14 miles, and I have been commuting that at night from time to time. I get through uh, some areas that are a little bit on the dark side, no street lights, no house lights. It's nice to be able to have that 600 or even 850 lumen output so that I can see where I'm going. The next thing you need is a good taillight setup. Now you'll notice in our case here, the Boogeyman's bike is outfitted with two taillights. There's a couple reasons for that. First and foremost, having more lights means being able to be seen better. But second, another big benefit of this is if you happen to run out of battery on one light, you can use the other one. Having limited front lights is okay. It's not the end of the world. If you can go slowly, you can still get where you got to go and you can still see what's in front of you. But having no taillights is a pretty surefire way to get killed. Somebody will come up behind you, they won't see you, and they will run you over. So having a couple taillights in the back is never a bad thing. Shoot for something in the 50 lumen range. 40 is uh, on the low end. You can find some that have, have as many as 100 lumens output. Bear in mind if you put on 100 lumens behind you on a red light, you might be pissing some cars off behind you, and they might want to take you out just for spite. So I stick around the 50 lumen range. Next up is fenders. And at our local bike shop, the bike shop owner actually told us, this is the best upgrade you can make to your bike during the wintertime. Why? It makes you more comfortable while you're riding, and it makes it so you don't have to clean your bike as much when you get back. And these are true, but it makes your bike look really dorky. I think the Boogeyman and I will agree that having fenders on your bike, well, it looks dorky. you got a beautiful race bike, and you throw on these monstrosities. They do make fenders that look pretty good. I actually kind of like the fenders that we have on ours. We've got some SKS race blade fenders. They look pretty good, they don't, they're not really obtrusive, and it really does actually help. It keeps water from being splashed up all over you. It is amazing how much of the difference is while you're riding in the winter to have fenders and not have all that water and that mud and that dirt and grime to get splashed up in your face. Also, in this case, we have buddy flaps on the back. We made our buddy flaps out of duct tape because why not? You can make everything out of duct tape. But in this case, it was pretty darn cheap. It cost us about 50 cents to make buddy flaps. You can buy them, 15, 20 dollars, and stick them on there. I've seen people use bottles they've cut in half and then rivet them on there. That's great. You know what, we used duct tape, it took us about five minutes, and it does make a big difference. That extra few inches down at the bottom, the boogeyman will tell you when he's sitting off my back wheel, if I don't have the buddy flap on, he hates me. If I do have the buddy flap on, he hates me less. Another addition that's nice to have is a nice set of winter training wheels and winter training tires. And along with that goes winter training tubes too. So in this case, the wheels that you see in front of you on the Boogeyman Spike here are a set of Mavic wheels. There's nothing wrong with them, they're actually great climbing wheels. They're very lightweight and in some situations he's been known to use those in a race. They also go into the follow cars and wherever we need a backup set of wheels. 
But the important thing is we're putting on a different set of wheels than what we train with or ride with during the summer and race seasons. Mostly because of the fact you are going to shred your brake tracks on those wheels. They're going to last less time. It doesn't hurt to have a new set of brake pads for the wintertime as well because you're going to go through those quickly. But having a good set of tires that is capable of withstanding all of the excess gravel and maybe glass and thorns and dried twigs and, and uh, sticker bushes that, can, that are going to get stuck in it, maybe that has a, a belt in it or a puncture resistant area on that tire, is going to be a great benefit. You don't want to be stranded on the side of the road in the winter. It's terrible. We did it just a few weeks ago. It's not fun. Your, whole, your hands are cold. They're tired. The tires get slippery. You don't want to be in that situation. So go with a puncture resistant tire. Uh, a lot of people like Continental Gator Skins. I personally do not. I find them incredibly hard to get on and off. And frankly, when you do have a puncture, and I don't care if you're using Gator Skins or not, you're going to have a puncture. When you have that puncture and the tire is hard to get off, and it's cold, and it's wet, and your hands are numb, that's miserable. So I like to go with a set of tires that's actually pretty easy to get on and off. And sometimes it's worth just taking your bike down to uh, a bike shop that maybe has some used tires there. Or talk to the mechanic and find out, hey, which tires go on and, and come off easily uh, and still hold up. Uh, the other thing I like to do is I like to go with old tubes, tubes that maybe I punctured during race season and patched, and definitely with heavier tubes. I know some folks that actually inject sealant to their tubes as long as you can remove the core. That works too. Uh, tubes, obviously, are the thing that are going to puncture, not your tire. So uh, if you have ways around that, that's great. I also take a tire uh, puncture seal uh, patch kit with me. Uh, so that way, if I happen to run out of CO2 tubes or anything, I can always just patch a tire on the side of the road as well. A couple last-minute items I like to add in there for winter riding. Of course, you want to take all of your normal accessories. You want to take plenty of water. That's a given. You want to take a saddlebag with some tubes, some CO2s, and some inflators. Uh, but something else I really think is, is a nice to have more in the winter and off seasons than in the race season is a mini pump. Uh, many of these can be purchased for very little money and they attach to your frame beneath your bottle uh, cage or whatnot. And they pay dividends. When you have a puncture on the side of the road, uh, you're going to have a piece of glass or a thorn stuck in there because the water holds that stuff to the tire and it just jams it in there. So if you take a mini pump with you and you happen to run out of CO2, so you can pump up your tire, find out where the hole is, Use your patch kit, patch your tube, and get back rolling again. Without it, you're just going to be stranded. You'll be calling your friends, your family, AAA, a cab, an Uber, whatever. You don't want to have to be in that situation. Take the extra uh, initiative to get a frame pump. And yes, you're going to look like a weirdo rolling around with a frame pump and uh, thick, fat tires and fenders. But you're going to be a weirdo that is making it home every single time. And relatively dry. And finally, the last accessory, which I think is very important, and the Boogeyman is modeling for us here, is a pair of glasses. Uh, glasses, in general, are something you should ride with anyway. Now, protecting your eyes is just smart. Uh, I can tell you for a matter of fact, the wreck that I had, had I not been wearing glasses, I wouldn't be looking out of my left eye right now. It's because my face hit a tree at about 30 miles an hour. I can also tell you that when we're riding in the winter, things fly up and get in your eye. Water from the road, water from the, from the sky, uh, debris, all of that just flies right at your face. You're going to ride with somebody that doesn't have fenders and buddy flaps because they think it looks dorky. Well, you're going to get behind that person and they're going to fling up stuff in your eyes. You don't want to do that while you're riding. You can't see. Not being able to see, going 30 miles an hour, probably a bad combination. So get safety glasses. In this case, the boogeyman's wearing his tinted glasses. Uh, it's usually best in the wintertime to go with a light tint or no tint whatsoever. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to go with a tint either as long as you're not planning to ride after dark with tinted glasses. But investing in some glasses, even cheap shop safety glasses, are going to be better than nothing. Just try to get shatterproof or shatter resistant glasses. And finally, probably the most important thing to take with you on a ride in the winter is a positive attitude. The boogeyman can tell you, I can tell you, it's hard to get out there and ride in the winter. It's dark, it's cold, it's wet, it's not fun. But you know what? It's more fun than sitting inside on the trainer. I don't care if you use a whiff or not, riding outside is more fun than sitting on a trainer at home. So, go outside, ride, but have a really good attitude because you can also know that come race season, you're the one that's been out on the road riding. You're the one that's actually getting real power numbers out on the road. And when you go to do those early season races and it's cold and it's wet, you've ridden in the cold, you've ridden in the wet, you're ready for those races. So, go out with a good attitude because you know what? Again, you're automatically a badass. So take it out to the road. Don't be afraid to ride in the winter. Don't be afraid to ride in the dark. Don't be afraid to ride. It's awesome.
Okay, thanks again for visiting us one more time uh, for this conclusion to the what to ride, uh, what to wear, and what to have your bike wear in the winter. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. It's winter time, so we don't ride as much at, uh, in the evenings and on the weekends, so we have more time to make some videos. We'll be bringing you some reviews. We'll be bringing you some other content as well, especially some tips for racing. So stay tuned. Subscribe. Share this video with your friends. Put it on Facebook. We love it when you do that. We love it when we see these videos shared, so feel free to share it. Also, stay tuned. We're going to be launching our brand new website soon. Okay, thanks again for visiting. We really appreciate you stopping by.